two hours. Yeah, yeah. Um, 20 hours. Well, home. you think nothing of traveling <laughs> five or six hours in a yeah, day. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, so AJ, we were, as thanks very much for talking to us. So I guess. It's my well, pleasure. As we were just talking about, one of the issues that, um, I guess, holding these seminars, what's the main message that you're hoping to get across? Um, well, there's quite a lot of messages, I suppose, but the main message is about, is about love. Firstly, God's love, and then also man's love, for mankind's love for each other. So there's, those are the two primary messages about, firstly, that we can receive love from God and, uh, and, and feel that. And then secondly, we can be transformed in the love, in the way that we display love to other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're the two primary messages. And then, then after, other than that, I'm interested in presenting what I call divine truth, which is what I, I feel is God's truth about all different subjects. And, and, in, and in that regard, there's like literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different subjects that anybody can question. And I'm just presenting the truth about all of those subjects wherever I can. And so what sort of reaction have you had from people as you've been traveling? And also, firstly, just how, how far have you been actually traveling? You've done a lot of, uh, a lot of the regional areas throughout Australia. Yes, we, we do a fair bit of traveling. Myself and Mary, we were talking about that this morning. And yeah, we on the average do 25 to 30,000 kilometers around Australia every year in terms of traveling. And then on top of that, we travel uh, around the world a, a bit as well. So, so we finish up traveling a fair portion of the time. Um, so, so for example, here in Mergen, this is the first time we've done a talk here for six months. And in between that time, we did talks through uh, regional Victoria and also, and also in Melbourne. And then we also went to Greece and did talks in, in Greece, in, in Athens. And what sort of reaction do you get from people? Well, most people who come along to the sessions are pretty uh, desirous of truth. So, so the reality is the reaction of the people who come to the sessions is always really positive. Um, the reality of people who don't find out as much about it or, or hearing it second or third hand, sometimes that's a bit distorted and so therefore people get upset about different things I'm meant to have said that I haven't said and so forth. But uh, that happens independently of what happens at the group. Generally at a group it's a really good, um, there's a really good environment at the group generally, yeah, and it's really positive. Mm -hmm. um, obviously too, um, you've drawn a lot of headlines recently by, by saying, you know, that you are Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is, when you say that, do you mean literally Jesus Christ or inspired by Jesus Christ? How, in what way, <laughs> in what exactly does that mean? Well, I am the person, Jesus, who lived 2,000 years ago on earth and I've lived those 2,000 years in between in the spirit world. And, uh, and then I came back to earth as well and I'm living on earth again. Um, I'm not got the same body as I had 2,000 years ago, obviously, because that body's all decayed. And but but I am the same person. I have the memories of all of that period of time. And um, a lot of people there, though feel that when I say I'm Jesus, that means I'm saying I'm God, and I'm not saying I'm God at all. I'm just a man, just like you're a man, and and I'm just a human like every, any other human. And uh, and so a lot of times there, uh, because of my statement that I am Jesus. A lot of people then make a heap of assumptions that are that are not what I'm saying at all. So have there been? So just to clarify, you're the same person that was here 2,000 years ago. How did, how did you come to that conclusion? How do how do you how do you, did you know that? Well, I have a, I have memories of all of that life, um, and memories of my life in the spirit world, as well, and memories of coming back to Earth as well. So um, I remember all of those events. So, so basically, it's a bit like yourself with your own life. You remember all of the events of your own life to a degree. Most, uh, some of them are hidden because of different emotional trauma that you may be experiencing and so forth. But generally, uh, most of your memories are intact and you usually remember from a fairly young age. So most people remember usually the bits and pieces of when they were one, two, three years of age. And then as their age has grown, they, they remember far more and it's the same with myself. I remember bits and pieces of my uh, life in the first century, you know, around one, two, three years of age. And then after that, I remember pretty much uh, most of my life in the first century and then all of my life in the spirit world and my process of uh, coming back to earth. I remember that process and also the experience of this life in the same manner that you would.
So, yeah. It's certainly not an easy claim to make though, and there's obviously <laughs> people that, you know, distract us from that. So, I mean, why, why make the claim at all if, if, if you're going to get that sort of reaction? Well, to me, it's not a major claim. Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit like yourself when you come up to me today and you introduce me and to yourself to me and you said, "Hi, I'm Troy," and I, I sort of feel like, "No, he, here I am, high on Jesus." Like, but there's no difference to me of you introducing yourself by your name and me introducing myself by mine. It's just the connotations that people place upon it. I feel that cause the reaction inside of themselves. So for me, I don't have any belief that I'm more unique or special than anyone else. I don't feel that uh, I'm di any different from yourself in, in a lot of ways. Obviously, we've had different experiences, but I don't uh, feel any different from the average person. Um, I do a lot of average things that everyone would do. And so the reality for me is that I don't see it as a special claim. I just, it is who I am, and, and I just say who I am, just like, when you come and introduce yourself, you say to me who you are. Yeah. And um, do you feel that, um, uh, how, one of the things we were talking about before was the media, and you obviously, like we said, drawn a lot of headlines. How do you feel that that, that claim, though, has been portrayed by the, the, white, the broader media? Well, unfortunately, a, a lot of the media, particularly the commercial media, is very intent on creating sensationalism rather than presenting truth. And, and so, Unfortunately, uh, there's been a lot of false claims by the media of things that I, they say I'm claiming, or they take small little snippets of some kind of video that I've, been, I've presented and, and totally claim it out of context in order to state that I'm saying something. But if you listen to the entire context, sometimes I'm even saying exactly the opposite of what they've stated. And so the reality I'm finding with most of the media is that there is this uh, desire in the media to create sensationalism for a purpose. And they can't very well go and say, oh, this guy seems quite down to earth and he seems quite relaxed and he seems quite normal. Um, because then, then people would say, but he's claiming he's Jesus and so that's not normal. And, and people would have a bit of an outcry about that. And so it's better if, for them, I feel, that they create some kind of sensationalism around myself and Mary's life um, in order to, to sell newspapers or to sell the TV slot that they're, that they're selling. But, but the reality is often what's being said is, is quite inaccurate. Could you provide an example of that? Yeah, yeah, I can provide a wonderful example. Um, here, uh, six months ago or so, we had Channel 7 uh, present at, the, at this venue here in Mergen. Now, now, they asked me beforehand that they could come and do some interviews with me and be present at a seminar, and I said yes. And they actually stayed with myself and Mary for two days in our own home uh, while they did interviews. And then they came along to this session, the, this, the last session we did here in Mergen. Now, on the television, they said that they had hidden cameras in our, in our auditorium when the reality is that their cameras were in full view of the audience. And in fact, we have videos of their cameras being in full view of the audience. And yet they said that there were hidden cameras some, somehow trying to portray that I wouldn't allow them, uh, that I don't have a feeling of openness or, or, or whatever with people. And uh, the reality is quite different. And then they, they made a series of statements after that based on their hidden cameras, all of which were false actually. And uh, in, in, that was in the Today Tonight show. And the disappointing thing about it all is that unless I take them to court or do some, something like that, there is, there is no other way to now, to now correct it. So what we're finding ourselves is we now record the, the interviews that media does. Uh, and we're just placing those recordings on, the, on YouTube so that if anybody wants to know what really happened, <laughs> And they'll see our full recording, unedited, of what the media has edited. And that's the best way we feel of handling those particular problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you obviously, you, you own the property out um, just north of Kingaroy, and um, there is, you know, uh, apparently there are other people that are buying in the area. Yep. Um, what is the broader, I mean, firstly, do you want people to be buying around you? And secondly, <laughs> what's the broader sort of picture that you've, what, what are the hopes? Like we've heard that, the, what is it, you've, the raising for an international sort of place for people to stay or something, any, any of these things no, true? <laughs> no, actually m myself and Mary have a small 40 acre property 
um, which is quite a, down, a low key property that myself and Mary live in. And, um, and yeah, I bought that property five or six years ago now. And we were quite surprised to find people were moving out <laughs> to, to be near us as, as, they, as they are. And, and sometimes Mary in particular has been quite um, um, like a bit, a bit worried that that's been happening. And um, with myself, it doesn't bother me where people live. Uh, it's up to them whether they move out to where we are or not. Um, we don't have any investment in people moving to where we are. We don't control their lives. It's up to them what they do. Um, in terms of our own property, uh, we have uh, just a couple of tents on the property for people to stay if they come and visit us. Um, and Who comes and visits? Um, well, people from all over the world come and visit at some point, generally. Uh, we've had people from all over the world from England, from uh, the USA, but also from other countries as well, come to visit us in Europe. And, uh, and they, we just are hospitable pretty much with everyone, so, so we just uh, have them stay with us if we can. Um, then there is, a, there is a group of people who own another property um, that we don't own ourselves, and, and God's Way of Love, which is an organisation we set up, does not own. But there are claims in the media that we do own it or that we do have something to do with it. We certainly have something to do with it because the people who own the property um, ask us for advice about what to do. They don't always follow that advice. <laughs> and in fact, uh, up until recently, often they didn't follow that advice. But, um, but more recently, they're, more, they're following that advice more often now than not. Um, so is there any broader plans though for the area for, as far as the, the property goes or as far as your message goes or is it just the plans just to keep travelling and talking? Or? Yeah, no, our plans are more um, worldwide than they are focused on a certain area. We, we would like to get the Divine Truth message uh, out to the world as much as we're able given our pro personal circumstances. and. Um, and so we're focused, we really go anywhere where people would like to hear us talk and ask questions or listen to a certain subject being discussed. So we don't actually, um, we wait until people want us to come before we visit. So that's how we basically organise all of our events. If people want us to go there, we organise uh, an event to go there and, and we just rock up. And how are you able to pay for that though, the travelling and things like that? Well, um, the majority of the times the events pay for themselves by, by people just coming in the door. We have a donation box up the back um, and, and anybody who wants to donate just puts some whatever they want in the box and usually the donations from that, uh, from that box covers our travel costs and our expenses getting there and our sound system and a few other things. And we do receive some donations from people who, who are very keen to hear, hear the truth we've got to discuss with them of, of a more substantial nature, but that's sort of independent of the, of the seminars themselves. And they actually help us, those donations help us to live and also to buy the things we need to do and to pay for the venues in, in advance and so forth. So that's how we do everything. And if we don't have the money available, then we just don't do it. Yeah. And lastly, um, why should people be, be listening to the message that you're providing? Well, I don't feel people should do anything for a start. So I feel everyone has free will. They have the ability to determine for themselves what they want to do. They have their own choices available in their own life. So my feelings are I don't feel anybody should do anything. However, it's worth um, at least having a look at some of the material that is presented because there are a lot of questions the average person has, questions about the universe, about God, about their own soul, about sickness and health, P questions about, um, a lot of people have a lot of questions about spirits and, and what happens after death and all of those kind of questions. And the divine truth answers all of those questions. So it's really worth looking into and discovering for themselves. They don't have to have any financial part of it. It's just a matter of downloading the material from the internet or, or coming along to a session. The sessions are free. The uh, internet material is all free. There's no need to donate anything. It can all be anonymous. It's not like they, uh, they need to do anything to give back to myself and Mary. We don't expect that at all. But, but it's worth having a look at if it answers all of those kind of questions that mankind generally has been asking for centuries. Well, just as, well, just on like that as well. Would you be a, you used the word spirit? I think spirit world before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you are you able to describe that? Is there is there a heaven and hell? 
Um, yes, but let's uh, be a bit more specific than that. Um, we are made of a physical body, a spirit body and a soul. And so right now, you, if, if a person could see your spirit body, they can see your spirit body and your physical body at the same time. Now, when you lose your physical body through the process of death, there is a cord that separates. It's sort of like a communications cord between the physical body and the spirit body. The cord just separates. Now you're in the spirit world. Now you're a spirit. You still have the ability to go on the earth if you want to, but there are other dimensional existences that are now available to you. And in those dimensional existences, if your soul is in a condition of a certain amount of love, then you can go to the higher dimensional existences. If your soul is in a very dark condition without very much love in it at all, then your soul uh, will be attracted to the lower dimensional existences, which are all in the first dimension. And that's what religions have generally termed as hell. Uh, the conditions are poor, but they are not permanent. So wherever you arrive, you can still progress in love and get to a, a better condition. So the spirit world is just like a, once you pass, it's like a seamless change. And most people even don't experience much pain through that change. And then they, you arrive in the spirit world in the place where your soul has attracted the condition. And then you're able to progress as much as you want to progress in love, just like you could if you were living here on earth. Yeah. All right, no worries. That's all we needed. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate your time. No worries, mate. Yeah. You're going to stick around now, Troy? Or are you going yeah, well, I might. I'm going to go and get something to eat. And yeah, I might sure. Come sure. back because yeah. I think what time to start? One o'clock or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So. You're free to just. Um, I'll just say to the audience if you want to do a bit of shooting, mm -hmm. I'll just say to the audience that you. Um, that if you do want to do a bit of shooting, that there might be yourself doing some shooting. Mm -hmm. um, if they just put their hand up to you, if they don't want to be shot, if that's fine. Yeah, that's you. no, no, yeah. We I give the audience that. that's fair a enough, choice yeah. to. Mm. You know, to not be shot if that's. Uh, yeah, no, no. Well, we have to respect those boundaries. Don't yeah. We? Yeah. Um, aside from that, there's probably nothing else that we need to. You can come and go as you please, pretty much. Um, we'll just let them know that you might be walking around. With yeah, them. no, I appreciate that. No All right, cool. Yeah. All right. No worries. No worries. Thanks very much.